This is our final Sunday of 2020. We're in the book of Revelation, and this is the conclusion of the covenant of love that God has made with us, his children. Simply put, we win. But at what price? God's covenant comes at a price. A price paid not by you and I, but by God himself in the person of Jesus, whose blood was shed for us. John sees Jesus riding on a white horse, and he describes him with four names. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now I freely admit that I'm not much of a student of prophecy. I'm one of those people who's grateful for the introduction to this book which says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. I don't pretend to understand all the prophetic information in John's vision, but the names of Christ that he gives here, these I understand. Jesus is faithful and true. He is faithful and true in avenging his people, carrying out his purposes. History proves the validity of this name. His prophecies have been fulfilled. His promises made good. Jesus also has a name that only he himself knows. It was a written name, but incomprehensible to all but himself. I love how his names advance in majesty. Faithful and true, that's a powerful name, but it can't be said to be incomprehensible. Glory be to the one that is beyond my comprehension. And then a more majestic name is given. Jesus is the Word of God. This name refers to the Word which is sharper than any two-edged sword. It points back to his name given in John chapter 1, the Word which in the beginning was with God and was God. Jesus is the heart and the mind of God revealed. All our conceptions of Christ, all our hopes, all our, our, our salvation, it depends on this name. If Jesus is not the very word of God, then we have no savior, we have no hope. But the fourth name assures us that we not only have a savior and hope, we have a coming king of kings and lord of lords. On his thigh are emblazoned these majestic words, this title of prophetic victory for himself and for us. The kings of this world have abused their power for millennia, but it is blessed to know that Whatever kings and rulers of this world do, one day our King of kings and Lord of lords will return and set things in order. Verse 12 says, On his head were many crowns. His first crown was a crown of thorns, the head that had been beaten and spit upon by his enemies, the, the head that was bound by the linen wrappings of the tomb, the head that was bowed on the cross when he gave up the ghost on that head. John now sees many crowns. Band upon band of diadem, the prize of the victor of every Olympic race, they all come together forming one crown upon the head of the king of all kings. We not only celebrate as many crowns, we add to them. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Father, thank you that you've made a covenant of love with me, which was sealed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you've given to me your Holy Spirit to help me to abound in love for you and for others. Jesus, I add my crown to the many crowns upon your holy head. Blessed be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. God bless you. Today is the final Sunday of 2020. Hope to see you this morning.